Long ago in Skyrim, the men and elves of the Morethic Era lived in peace. That was until the Snow Elves, or Falmar as they are known, decided to slaughter the Nordic people, destroying their city of Sarthal and sending Isgrimor and his two sons fleeing to Admora. The reason for the elves' attack is still debated to this day. Some believe that the elves feared the Nords' culture was surpassing their own and decided to put an end to it, while others theorize that the Nords stumbled across something so powerful under Sarthal that the elves had to claim it for themselves. Much later in the Fourth Era, the College of Winterhold would discover the Eye of Magnus under Sarthal, which aligns with the latter theory and could be the reason behind the Falmer's attack. Regardless of the reason, Isgrimor returned from Atmora with his 500 companions seeking vengeance. These warriors dedicated their every breath to the extermination of the elves, and eventually, after much fighting, they succeeded in driving the elves out of Skyrim and Solstheim. Many snow elves that were not slaughtered in battle actually survived by fleeing underground. It was another race of elves, the highly advanced Deep Elves or Dwemer who took them in. The Dwemer let the snow elves seek refuge with them under Skyrim's surface, but their safety came at a cost. They were forced to consume a toxic fungus that gradually turned them blind, and ultimately the Falmer were enslaved by the Dwemer who used them to further their own aims. It is ironic that a race of elves who may have been obsessed with the Eye of Magnus and attacked the Nords because of it would eventually lose their sight. And in today's video, we head to a cave not far from Sarthal down to the southeast known as the Sightless Pit. Perhaps this is one of the first places where fleeing snow elves sought their safety, but what I can tell you for sure is that this is one of the most mysterious locations in all of Skyrim. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and today we have a very speculative topic to discuss, a location which may seem like an ordinary Dwemer ruin, now infested with the corrupted and vile Falmer as we know them from Skyrim, but may actually be so much more. In this video we're going to enter the Temple of Scrib and explore some theories on who this mysterious Scrib is and what this location may have been used for. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments below, especially because it involves so many theories, and be sure to tell us what Elder Scrolls theories you want explored on Fudge Muppet next. So heading to the Sightless Pit, you'll quickly notice that the name seems quite literal, in the sense that there's a large hole in the ground that you can't really see into. Let's say goodbye to the Statue of Azura and hop inside. On my first time here, I didn't even notice that there's a big pool of water behind where your adventure begins. Using the path ahead, we make our way through an icy cavern area, and you'll notice there were clearly some explorers or bandits who tried to delve into this pit, but didn't get too far from from their camp. Maybe they drunk too much of their wine before the danger ahead. All in all, some Falmer arrows are not the kind of sight that would deter a dragonborn, are they? So we can keep moving, and sometimes there's a Falmer here who likely killed these bandits, but in most of my playthroughs it's actually empty, and then it's not long before things start appearing very dwarven. The passage down is unusual, and it looks as though it must have been quite hard to navigate long ago before the Dwemer vanished. Perhaps they used tonal architecture that changed the way physics work, allowing something akin to the levitation seen in Neloth's Telvanni Mushroom Tower, or perhaps there were some sort of stairs that have since been destroyed. As we travel down into the next area, we'll come across the residents of this ruin, the Falmer, and of course their favourite insect or arachnid companions. As you follow the path down and further through the ruin, you'll notice some of these interesting red Dwemer banners. As we'll soon discuss, these banners become quite important in relation to some of the theories about the significance of the temple ahead. After mowing down some more Falmer enemies, we arrive at this sensational looking temple entrance. This is the door to the Temple of Scrib, and the whole scene, particularly with the fallen Dwemer Centurion, looks very cool. For anyone already beginning to spin theories in their head, I will say that the Centurion cannot be looted, and therefore it must have been placed there purely for decorative reasons, perhaps to tell a story. 
Moving through the temple doors, you'll notice more of the red Dwemer banners we saw earlier, as well as plenty of tattered red and gold patterned cloth that probably looked a lot nicer back when the Dwemer walked through these rooms. The red banners and red floor material can be found in many other Dwemer ruins, though most of the time not in this quantity, making me think the Temple of Scrib was an important area for the Dwemer. But why would the Dwemer have a temple, and why would they worship Scrib, who or whatever that that is, and that's if worship was even the purpose of this place. Going further through the ruin, we move through a beautiful circular tube-shaped pathway and then through some more icy Falmer camp territory, home to their eerie trademark totems assembled from bone and insect parts. At last, we enter a massive chamber, similar to the environment of Blackreach. Dwemer machinery connected to the ceiling continues to pump away as the Falmer and their minions patrol the walkways and main elevated area. The Falmer are well entrenched in this fascinating place, and if we take some longer shot camera angles, we can see that there are these oddly placed arches positioned around the cavern, as well as many pillars surrounding what looks like some kind of important centerpiece area. We can see a Falmer and their minions standing by what appears to be a much smaller pillar covered quite densely in glowing mushrooms, with a chest directly in front of it. Atop the stone block sits a creation of Dwemer design, which you may have noticed in other ruins is usually flipped to face down and serve as a kind of dwarven chandelier, lighting the area. However, there is only one of these devices in the Temple of Scrib, and it is certainly not glowing with light, at least by the time we're visiting. And why is it upside down? Well, an easy answer could be that it's used to light the ground area under this small shrine-like creation. The light potentially emanating from this device in the past could also have some sort of religious themes, which we'll get into later. I also did some investigation looking for any of these devices switched upside down in other Dwemer ruins, and all I could find was this beautiful device in Blackreach. The design is quite similar, though this one was built slightly different to have a beam of hot blue fire emanating from the top, like some some kind of oversized candle. To the left and right of this shrine-like creation, there are these flags or banners appearing again, but here's where things get very weird. To the right, there is the typical red Dwemer banner, but this one is ripped in half. Perhaps it was torn or sliced in half or someone set fire to it. To the left, however, is something very special, a typical Dwemer banner design that has been made entirely green. In fact, I actually found a Steam Link to base game Skyrim, not even special edition, so I could purchase it yet again to properly investigate the Temple of Scrib for this video. I just didn't want to go messing with all of my mods, but even if I turn them off completely, the banner in the vanilla game just seems to be an extra vibrant green, as you can see in the footage I'm using in parts of this video. This green banner is clearly no accident, and upon searching many Dwemer ruins for anything similar, all I could find were more red banners with the same design we see here. While tattered, this banner differs to the one on the other pillar as it's still at its full length and stands alone as what appears to be the only green Dwemer banner in all of Skyrim. If anyone has found another, I would love for them to tell me where, because this seems to be a unique one. This all leads us to the question, what unknown is going on with this location? And I think the main thing on everyone's mind is who or what is Scrib? Is Scrib a word used by the Falmer, or is it related to the Dwemer? Let's explore the idea of the Dwemer first, so the Dwemer are not known to be a religious bunch. Elder Scrolls fans will sometimes refer to them as atheists, though I'd prefer to say that the Dwemer simply do not care for the gods. This is different to an atheist as we would define it, which is someone who does not believe in the existence of gods at all. The Dwemer were surely aware of the Aedra, the Daedra, and the tangible impacts, particularly of the latter, that have made waves across Tamriel's timeline. What a god is can also depend on your viewpoint. To one person, they may be deserving of reverence for simply being immortal and powerful, whereas to another, such as a Dwemer, they could simply be considered as overblown spirits, much larger and more powerful than mortals, but perhaps not deserving of reverence simply due to this. In the most general sense, the Dwemer want to become gods or achieve godlike prowess through an extreme understanding and implementation of powerful 
technology. The use of tonal architecture which allowed them to bend space and time, shape landscapes and defy the rules of nature proves that they were no doubt achieving their aims. However, it is widely assumed that they became too skilled for their own good, flying way too close to the sun, so to speak, when their entire race disappeared when Kagranak's legendary tools were supposedly used on the heart of Lorcan. It was none other than Vivek who wrote in The Battle of Red Mountain and the Rise and Fall of the Tribunal that the Dwemer scorned the Daedra and mocked our foolish rituals and preferred instead their gods of reason and logic. So why would the Dwemer ever have a temple to this Scrib character if in fact it even is a Dwemer name? Well, there's a few possibilities. Firstly, we must remember that not every member of every race conducts themselves like the majority. There are always cultural outliers who forge their own path. Look no further than the prophet Veloth, who took his followers out of the Somerset Isles and all the way to Morrowind, where they revered the Daedra, something that directly opposed Old culture, and then they became the Kaima. Perhaps Scrib was some kind of Dwemer deity, worshipped by a separatist group, who saw worth in worship and the rewards it can bring. Perhaps as the pragmatic elves they were, a small group of them deemed it most efficient to harness not only powerful technology, but also the gifts of a god. Scrib could be their version of Hermaeus Mora, whose sphere is forbidden knowledge, who they may have followed with the idea that there's no point in leaving any power unutilized in order to achieve their goals. This, however, would not explain the continuous use of the red banners throughout the rest of the ruin, if one would assume that the green banner would have replaced them all if it were to represent a new group or a new way of thinking. Or maybe they were still very proud to be Dwemer and associated with the other members of their race, but they just added a green banner to represent their additional and different way of thinking. The Dwemer were known to fight amongst themselves at times, and there were multiple different clans, but I'm still not super confident that this Dwemer-based theory is likely to be true. We could speculate that Scrib was actually a person, an actual Dwemer. Maybe Scrib was such a powerful and talented tonal architect that he was able to gather a following and have them pledge their allegiance to furthering his aims. With the temple currently in a dilapidated state, it's hard to know with any certainty. That said, it is wise to remember that we do not know who decided to name this place a temple. Perhaps in the Dwemer tongue, the word for temple does not have the same religious connotations as it does in Tamriel. After all, other religious sounding words have been used for certain Dwemer ruin zones. Take Ulfturned Cathedral for example, which is a location you travel through on your search for the Elder Scroll needed in Skyrim's main story. There's also the fact that Kagranak has been referred to as High Priest Kagranak. Though I can't help but notice that the Temple of Scrib does seem to have a somewhat religious feel to it. The chest at the foot of this centerpiece device almost looks like it's there for offerings too. But all of this does not not explain something significant we haven't looked at yet. If you head outside using the lift to the left of the center area, you can travel further up the mountain and arrive at a sacrificial looking altar. There's a skeleton laying upon it, multiple skeletons laying lifelessly around it, and a book, The Doors of Oblivion. The book talks about various Daedric realms, and if you touch anything on the altar, multiple skeletons come to life and begin to fight you. They're armed with ancient Nordic bows, and one could make the assumption that this altar, no longer in the Temple of Scrib, has nothing to do with it at all, and I'd agree that some Daedra worshipping necromancer could have just found some ancient altar and decided to practice necromancy there. However, this altar area is built in the same Dwemer stone kind of design, and if we look at the Prima game guide for Skyrim, we can find something hidden from us in game. It turns out that this is actually an unmarked location specifically called the Altar of Scrib. To me, this utterly defeats the notion that the word temple in Temple of Scrib might not have religious themes. Then again, the Dwemer might not have originally called it the Altar of Scrib, in the same way that the Temple of Scrib could be a renamed location based on something involving the Falma. Overall, this hidden name for the altar just adds a nice touch of mystery and proves that there's more to this location than one might first assume. So it could involve a Dwemer sub-faction who turned kind of religious, but I'm still not fully convinced. But let's air out some final doubts I have about this Dwemer worship theory. Firstly, I found it very interesting that Scrib starts with the letter X. You may not think this is significant, as the word Scrib can appear as jumbled and hard to pronounce at first glance as many Dwemer names. 
Words like Mizinchleft, Michuanzel, Bethalft, and Kagenthams don't exactly roll off the tongue, but upon a closer inspection, you can find that out of over 80 listed Dwemer locations found all over Tamriel, featuring in any game, including The Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard, Morrowind, Skyrim, and The Elder Scrolls Online, not a single one has ever featured the letter X. On top of this, not a single Dwemer character name, and there's over 30 of them if you count reading in-game books about the Dwemer, has ever featured an X, no matter how complex they are. Not even a Dwemer word like this has an X, even though it just looks like it should. So I just don't think Scrib is even a Dwemer word. To add to my investigation, I found that the letter X is not even present on Calselmo's stone in Skyrim. Technically, you can see a character for X listed online as part of the Skyrim Dwemer alphabet, but this is actually extracted from Skyrim's data folders, where you can find a developer-used font file that has a Dwemer character for every letter of the alphabet. But the letter X still doesn't seem to feature in the actual game. The only example of a Dwemer X even existing is in a concept art document created for the Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard. The same symbol on that document would later show up extremely rarely, such as on the Divine Metaphysics document you can find in Morrowind. Furthermore, Dwemer letter names were also written in that concept art document containing the glyphs, and none of those actually have an X in them either. As you can see by the extreme rarity of the glyph for X, and it never being used in a location, letter, or character name, Scrib being a Dwemer word just seems so unlikely. Also a big thanks to Lady Narava for helping me to explore my questions surrounding the Dwemer alphabet. The one exception that people may think of is the sublocation known as the Arcanex. However, we can assume that this is Tamrielic as it has its root in the word arcane. Similarly to how Temple in Temple of Scrib is Tamrielic, seemingly translated for the player to understand where they are. Because if every word used to describe Dwemer ruins was written in the Dwemer language, which the Dwemer would have been speaking all the time, things would no doubt be very confusing while playing Skyrim. So there's definitely a chance Scrib is related to the Dwemer, but I'm more or inclined to believe that it is actually a Falmer word, or perhaps even a god related to the Falmer. In the Dawnguard DLC, Knight Paladin Gelibor tells us a bit about Snow Elf religion and says that they worshipped Oriel, Trinamac, Sirabane, Finasta, and Jeffa. This is very similar to the typical Altmeri pantheon, only that it seems to have dropped a few, and that's only if we believe that Gelibor's list is all-inclusive and final. It wouldn't be far-fetched to assume that many Snow Elves did worship other elven deities, such as Magnus, for example, but that it was not as mainstream compared to more popular gods. Magnus worship would make a lot of sense if the idea of the Snow Elves wanting the Eye of Magnus under Sarthal is the true reason for the Night of Tears. Snow Elves do focus on the concept of light, and Magnus is the sun god, so it's quite fitting. By the time of Skyrim, however, the Snow Elves have fallen quite far from their glory days, and while these Falma have certainly degraded in many ways, they have also developed a new culture, a new language, and based on their use of totems and what we see here today, seemingly their own religion. The Falma may come across as mindless savages, but they are quite intelligent. They do not wear the armor of their Dwemer oppressors, though it may have been easier to do so. Instead, they make sturdy armor from the chitinous materials of the chorus, which they have domesticated. And one can only imagine it serves as a quieter option as they skulk about the depths of Skyrim. The Falma heavy armor even has an elegant cloth that adorns it, dyed a beautiful deep purple color. This variant was only added in the Dawnguard DLC, but the standard Falma armor, which was present in the base game before DLC, always has a green dyed cloth hanging down from the waist. While the color looks a bit worn from being used as clothing all the time, it is similar to the intact, uniquely green banner hanging on the left pillar in the Temple of Scrib. Perhaps the Falma of this location turned it into a place of worship, and the green banner is almost like a flag they've made to represent themselves. We do not know how long the Dwemer have been missing from here, and there's always a chance it was before the entire race actually disappeared. What if the Falmer slaves of the Sightless Pit and the Temple of Scrib rebelled against their overlords, and in this specific instance, actually won? It would explain the fallen centurion at the entrance, placed there purely for cosmetic reasons. So who might Scrib be? 
Well, perhaps in the process of transforming into the downtrodden beings they are today, the Falmer could have turned to Daedra worship. Namira, Daedric Prince of Ancient Darkness, would be a fitting pick. This goddess of the dark is associated with insects, spiders, and other repulsive creatures that lead mortals to feel revulsion. Based on what we saw in her quest in Skyrim, she seems fond of sacrificial altars, which could explain the altar of Scrib outside. It's worth noting that the Falmer could definitely work with stone and may have built this altar in the first place while being slaves for the Dwemer. It could have had another use before it was repurposed and renamed to be the Altar of Scrib. The Falmer could have even turned to Hermaeus Mora, looking for a cure to their problems. Maybe a Daedric Prince actually gave them the upper hand to defeat the Dwemer here. Azura also sits in view of the Altar of Scrib, so its purpose is really anyone's guess, but I think there's a much more interesting potential answer to this mystery. Remember, it's all very theoretical in this video, but I personally suspect that Scrib is actually one of the deities of the traditional elven pantheon, given a new name and perhaps even slightly different themes. As you may know, there are many different versions of the same entities in the Elder Scrolls universe. Akatosh is the time god in the Divine's Imperial Pantheon, but to the High Elves and the Snow Elves, that time god is Auriel. Metaphysics can get way deeper than we have time to dive into for this video, but the gist of it is that there are many distinct entities that you could picture as all sharing a root entity. Think of Auriel and Akatosh as two sides of the same coin, so to speak. Another way to look at it is like one god with multiple personalities or aspects that different cultures focus on and tap into through specific worship. In the Elder Scrolls, worship also gives power to the receiving entity and can literally shape how the entity interacts with the mortal world. Myth makes reality. So I wonder if the Falmer, as they began to degrade into the corrupted beings they are today, actually took on slightly different different gods, corrupted versions of their old pantheon. One elven god we talked about already is Magnus, and that could make sense given that the centerpiece Dwemer device seems to be designed to emit light. Of course, light is also above ground, and the sun is something that Falmer would probably crave, at least in the early stages of being trapped underground and being slaves to the Dwemer. But more interesting to me is actually Xarxes. To the ancient Oldmer and the High Elves today, Xarxes is considered especially important for his role of recording their history. Xarxes records not only their large and small achievements, but also the life stories of individual elves, with every connection of lineage and heritage that link them with their ancestors and bind them together. You will see this god in many depictions holding a book, be it in a painting or as a statue. You may notice the book design on this statue depicts the symbol of Auriel, which is found all over the Snow Elf areas of the Forgotten Vale. It is also like the symbol on the front of the ancient Falmer tomes, or Agro Shub has you tracked down, which are later translated into readable Falmer texts. Well, what if the Snow Elves in the Temple of Scrib, as they gradually shifted into their corrupted forms, turned to Xarxes in worship, praying that, as a god who records elven ancestry, that he would forever remember who they were, that the Snow Elves would not be forgotten, that their ties to their former selves, their true selves, always remained, and perhaps that they could even be helped. After all, Xarxes is the scribe of Auriel, who is the most respected deity in Snow Elf religion. Interestingly, Falmer slaves did secretly build a massive statue themselves of an elf holding a very large book, didn't they? Yes, that's right, I'm talking about the massive statue in Urkingthand that you visit in order to stop Mercer Frey towards the end of Skyrim's Thieves Guild storyline. During that quest, there is this note you find called Thief's Last Words that talks about the statue and its twin eyes of the Falmer jewels. Nobody thought they were real, but I've seen them. The eyes of the Snow Elves. The Dwarves thought they took them from the Falmer, but they themselves were fooled. A statue built in secret by the slaves. The eyes burn into you, and I see them even now. Seraphor escaped through the collapsing tunnel, but he'll never escape what we've seen. Men will never believe him, and he'll be driven mad by the knowledge that he'll never see them again. But I may yet see them again before I die. 
The idea that the Falmer actually built this statue in secret is truly fascinating, and unlike the Eye of Magnus, of which their obsession or interest is not fully confirmed, this statue definitely shows the Snow Elves placing an emphasis on the concept of eyes. We never get told who this statue is, but simply based on other elven statue designs, I'm going to guess that this elven statue holding a torch, there's the light theme again, and a book is Xarxes. Xarxes is also known by the title, The One Who Watches, which arguably links him even more strongly to the theme of eyes, and with the Falmer losing their own sight, it only adds to why he might have become a significant Falmer deity. Furthermore, if we theorize on the etymology of the word scrib, you can easily see how it might actually be derived from a mix of Xarxes and his role, scribe. Scrib almost sounds like a Falmer trying to spit out the word scribe in their wretched voice we only ever hear them grunt and screech in. Perhaps the Falmer once worshipped Xarxes at this altar of Scrib before it was eventually left unattended and then seized by a necromancer. On a side note, remember back to the main area that has this Dwemer device which normally functions like a light? Well, while a strong association with light could point towards other elven gods, it could also be tied to Xarxes. In the Elder Scrolls Online, there's an item called Xarxes Memory Worship Candle, which is categorized as the treasure type light's ritual object. In the item description, it explains that this candle is big. In fact, it is a leg-sized tallow candle, the kind used in the annual rites of Xarxes Memory at South Point Cathedral. Learning that Xarxes has a massive candle associated with him is quite funny when you consider that I first described the only Dwemer lighting device I've seen that reminds me of the upside down one in the Temple of Scrib as an oversized candle. This was before I even knew of the Xarxes memory worship candle item. So if this Dwemer device in the temple was used in any worship involving Xarxes, it turns out it wouldn't be the first time a large light was involved. What's also interesting about this whole old Falmer gods idea is taking another look at Falmer armor, in particular the heavy armor variant. It appears to mimic the armor on the statue of the Snow Elves' favorite elven god. So if we take a look at the statue of Auriel in the Elder Scrolls Online, or much better, the statue in the Forgotten Vale in Skyrim, you can see this almost chitinous look with two spikes down the bottom. Now I'm obviously not saying that this elven statue aesthetic is based on the chorus creature that the Falmer have domesticated, but it could be that the now corrupted Falmer have used the chorus body parts to emulate this appearance in their own armor. To me, this only further links to and strengthens any idea that the Falmer might still respect and revere their old culture and in mysterious ways, their old pantheon. It's all very intriguing, but I find the Xarxes theory to be the most convincing answer to the mystery. Xarxes, mystery, Mysterium Xarxes, just kidding, but trying to figure out stuff like this might land me a permanent stay in the Shivering Isles, though I think by now you can see why Xarxes, or a partially corrupted Falmer version of him perhaps, is who Scrib could refer to. The reason I say partially corrupted is because the Falmer don't seem to have built any grand statues anytime recently, nor do they seem to be using the altar of Scrib outside anymore. Perhaps after they defeated the Dwemer, they used this altar for prayer or even sacrifice. I feel like a cool corrupted version of Xarxes could be a kind of servant Xarxes deity, an amplified version of Xarxes supposed involvement with Hermaeus and Mora. Mora claims to have given Xarxes special knowledge which was recorded in the Ogma Infinium, so it could also make him more relatable to the Falmer, who were also servants to powerful beings with far more knowledge than them, the Duema. I'll also say that on my first investigation of the temple, there was actually an amulet of Arche in that tribute looking chest, and Arche actually seems to have ties to Xarxes, if you read Tuwaka Arche Xarxes by Lady Cinnabar of Tanith, but alas, it was not a set loot item. So what do you think? What is the Temple of Scrib? Was Scrib a Dwemer who lived in the flesh? A Dwemer deity worshipped by a clan who kind of diverged culturally from the rest? It could be the case. Or do you think that Scrib is a Falmer deity worshipped to this day, or perhaps only during their transitory downfall into a blind and aggressive race into the betrayed? 
Remember, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below, so I can't encourage you enough to start brainstorming. Thank you so much for tuning into Fudge Muppet. As promised, this was a very speculative, theory-based video, but I had so much fun making it and doing heaps of investigations, so I hope you really liked it. Please do let me know if you want me to cover any more Elder Scrolls theories on any topic you can come up with, and maybe we'll make a video on it soon. Social media links are in the description. Please like the video if you think it deserves it. Subscribe for more Elder Scrolls fun. My name is Michael, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.